What's up, Cafe Angels? We're Cafe Kamaji Travels. I'm David. And I'm Travis. And this week we're talking about the 12 most useful apps when living and traveling abroad in Mexico. So let's go. But before we do that, we have to talk about my eyes and my teeth. <laughs> Did you guys notice anything different? I have braces and I can see. So have you been following along like two videos ago? Yeah. We went and got all the healthcare and David got braces and contacts. Yeah, I only have the bottom row in right now and I get the top row in after New Year's. Feels good. Yeah, the braces feel weird. Nobody told me that my inside of my lip would get a little raw. So I told him, I told him. Like um, repeatedly, I told him. Not one time. I had braces from fourth grade to sophomore year of high school. He likes to like, Shout that from the mountaintop. That is six I years. I had them for six years. I'm just saying. <laughs> He's had them for six days and it's like, my lip. No, I'm it's fine. It's hard. It's fine. No, but uh, the first couple days he had them, he was walking around going around. <laughs> and the spit was flying everywhere. <laughs> it was just lovely. So the first app that we found useful is called Traveling Mailbox. What it is is a virtual mailbox. It allows you to keep a US address and you can get any kind of mail sent there, uh, packages sent there. It gives you a notification on your phone when you receive something and you have the option to view it, uh, to shred it, have it forwarded to you, and it's really, really simple and easy. Yeah, I didn't even know virtual mailboxes were a thing before we started yeah. thinking about living abroad and now I want to keep it always and forever. <laughs> it's just super convenient to like not have to worry about your mail and have someone else take care of it and send you notification when something important comes in. Yeah, we went paperless before we moved, so we don't have that much mail, but it is very helpful when we get bills or I still can get a, a paper check from a job I did back in LA. Okay, subtle brag. <laughs> Just getting checks. <laughs> checks on We are not using this. Never mind about that. A thousand percent using it. Why? <laughs> no, but it, they also deposit checks, which is really cool. Yes. Travelingmailbox.com. For all of the apps that we're talking about today, we're putting links in the description box below, so make sure to check those out. The second app that is super useful has been ExpressVPN. So VPNs are super helpful when you're living abroad because uh, a lot of movies and television shows on Netflix and Hulu and HBO are country specific. Shows like Moesha, Sister Sister, Parkers, none of them are available in Mexico. Which is tragic. <laughs> Someone should do something. But until that happens, you have to have a VPN on your device, which routes your internet through servers in the States. So Netflix and Hulu and HBO think you're in America still, and you can watch Moesha for the 90th time. <laughs> but what's cool about ExpressVPN is they have servers all over the world in 160 countries. You can choose whatever country you'd like. Maybe you wanna watch Netflix in the Philippines. And they allow five simultaneous connections, which is great because because David could be on his iPad watching something and I can be on the Apple TV watching something else using the same VPN. So the third app is called Speed Test. And what it does is allows you to see the speed of your internet, of how fast or slow it is. And we have had quite the journey with so. the internet. We will make a separate video <laughs> about our experience with the internet. Just have some ups and some downs. And some sideways. And some downs. <laughs> That's another topic for another day. So what it does is it's really easy to use. You just press go on the app and it's a speedometer that reads the speed of your internet. So then it kind of allows you to determine what issues might be coming up with your uploads or downloads. Um, and you can kind of work accordingly based on that. I work 100% online, so I am very dependent on the internet right now, and so I've been using it daily just to see what I'm kind of running into before I hop on for work. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. <laughs> the fourth super useful app that we found while traveling and living in Mexico has been WhatsApp. WhatsApp. WhatsApp is, if you don't know, primarily a messaging app, but abroad in countries like Mexico, you can send messages to pretty much every single business. 
person, establishment, anything. Everyone and everything is on WhatsApp. What's helpful is if your Spanish isn't perfect, like ours isn't yet, instead of calling a business and maybe like bumbling through your kind of sad Spanish, you can translate what you want to say on like Google Translate and then put it in WhatsApp and send it off and do the same thing back and forth when people respond. It has been amazing. We've also heard that there are like WhatsApp groups, but we're not in any. Invite us. Where's our invite? We've heard they're helpful, but we don't know how yet. So if you know, please let us know in the comments. And if you want to invite us to your WhatsApp group, like we would come. And that's a transition into the fifth app, which is Google Translate. Google Translate has been very helpful when we have needed to speak a little bit more fluently to someone because we don't know what we're saying. <laughs> it also has a really great conversation feature. You basically just talk into the phone and it'll translate for you and speak for you, which has been really helpful. When we went to the eye doctor, Lydia, she didn't speak a lot of English, so we really were just having conversations through this app uh, out loud. <laughs> it was amazing. It also has this really cool camera feature. Say you were at a grocery store and you're trying to read the ingredients on a particular item, you just hold the camera up to it and it will translate it for you um, in real time, and even in the same font. It's really remarkable. Continuing on the theme of learning Spanish, the sixth most useful app that we've found is called Tandem. And so Tandem connects you with conversation partners whose native language is the language that you want to learn. It's incredible. So when I sign up for the app, I put in that I speak English and I'm hoping to learn Spanish. And it matches me with people who speak fluent Spanish and are hoping to learn English. And then you just have conversations with them and you can send just uh, regular text messages or send voice messages or have video chats. And there's like translation features within the app. It's Truly so helpful in a way that going to a normal Spanish class is not. Uh, because you're just like talking to people and making friends. One of my friends, my best tandem friend <laughs> is named Carmen. Hola Carmen. I need to message you. I'm sorry Carmen, lo siento. But I've just found it to be really, really helpful. It was a little overwhelming for me because I am not that fluent yet. So I really felt like I wasn't having great conversations and I was cheating. So I just was <laughs> translating what they were saying and I felt like I just wasn't really learning like I should be learning so yeah so it's maybe not for like straight up beginner beginners but once you have a little vocabulary and some verbs down you know you're ready to go it's a good place to find someone to talk to and practice and practice and you feel useful because then you're also switching and practicing in English or whatever your native language is there's a free version and a paid version highly recommended the seventh app that we have been using is called Duolingo. And you might have heard of it before, but it is a really, really fun way to learn the language that you want to learn. Uh, they provide these small, like short little classes, but they are animated and they have these little figures that speak to you and talk to you and you repeat it back and they make it like a game. So you like earn coins and treasures. There's like a trumpet when you in the <laughs> class, it goes bah, bah, bah. But we also found out that they have a podcast, which has also been super helpful. Yeah. Uh, it's available anywhere podcasts are available, and the Spanish version tells you a story half in English, half in intermediate Spanish. And it's useful because they feature Spanish speakers from all over the world, so it, it helps you get used to hearing different accents, different dialects, and the stories are also just really interesting. Yeah, so if you just love podcasts, it's a yeah. really great podcast to listen to. And the last Spanish language focused app, number eight, is called Conjugato. This is a straightforward flashcard app to help you conjugate verbs. They have, I don't even know how many verbs in there, uh, and it's just like a straightforward flashcard of conjugating. I try to get in like five to 10 minutes a day ish of practice, just getting my brain to conjugate verbs. So, Conjugato. Get it? The 10th app that we found useful is Uber. I think everyone has probably used it or at least knows what it is. It is very, very prominent here in Mexico or at least the city that we're in. So it has been very easy to use because we don't have a car. So they do have public transportation here. We can obviously use that, but it's been very helpful and easy for us to get around with Uber. 
Pro tip, if you're coming to Merida, you cannot get picked up by Uber at the airport. Right. So you have to walk outside of the airport parking lot and call an Uber from like a nearby <laughs> restaurant. We did not know that. We got off the plane. It was hot. It was rainy. We were tired. We had been up since like 4 a.m. And I called the Uber and he explained to me in Spanish that we could not get picked up there. <laughs> it took like 20 minutes of walking and it was a mess. Yeah, so don't worry, we failed the test for you. <laughs> the 11th most useful app that we found while traveling is Charles Schwab. So obviously this is not just an app, it's the bank. We talked about this a couple videos ago, but Charles Schwab has a really good account if you are traveling or living abroad. It is called the Charles Schwab Investor Checking Account. Might sound scary because you're like, I'm not an investor. I have not that much money. Neither do we. So you have to, it's a free checking account attached to a brokerage account. It'll ask you to open a brokerage account, but you don't have to use the brokerage account. The reason that it's so super helpful is they refund all foreign ATM fees and you get the best exchange rates. When you go to withdraw pesos here, they're gonna ask you if you wanna use the conversion rate at the ATM you're going to want to decline that and use the one that Charles Schwab gives you because it will literally save you hundreds of dollars. And then we also like it because there's no monthly fees and no monthly minimums. So it's, it's been the easiest way to get our dollars into pesos. The 11th app is Facebook, which sounds kind of redundant because everybody uses Facebook and everybody has Facebook. But what we didn't know is the amount of groups that are available in Facebook. I have been always asked to join groups, but I've never taken them seriously. Popular. <laughs> Subtle brag. You know everybody gets asked to groups and I've you're just, just been, like, I've just been asked Sarah's to Cupcake so many groups. join. I don't even, what is that? I uh, there's a general expat groups that will answer any question that you have. Someone has already asked these questions, so you can just search in these groups and find the answer that you're looking for. There's a black expat group. There is a vegan expat group. I mean, you name it, there's basically any kind of group, which also provides really great community too, and you don't feel alone or out here by yourself. The 12th most useful app that we've used in Mexico has been Amazon. And like, I get it. The last one was Facebook, this one was Amazon, like bleh. And yes, we agree. However, it's, it's Amazon is helpful, especially during the times of COVID where you don't wanna be out in a bunch of shops maybe all the time, uh, but also for people who don't have cars. It's been helpful to have some things delivered. What we'll say about Amazon in Mexico is it is not the same day, next day, two day shipping that we're used to in the States. And that is fine. We are at a slower pace. We're at home anyway. What's the rush? It takes maybe three, four days. Mm -hmm. Some stuff is quicker than it says it's going to be. Like it'll say it'll be seven days and it'll get here in four. Yeah. One thing to know about Amazon in Mexico is if you have an Amazon Prime account in the States, it doesn't automatically transfer to Amazon Mexico. You have to have a Mexican bank account, a Mexican bank card to get Amazon Prime in Mexico. Another thing we didn't know is when you're shopping on Amazon in Mexico, if it doesn't have a product or the specific thing you're looking for, you can look on the American Amazon website and see if they ship to Mexico, which a lot of products do and a lot of the Prime products do. It's not gonna be in two days, but you can get stuff. So those are the 12 apps that we have found useful for us while we've been here in Merida. Please let us know in the comments below if any other things that we should know and be aware of. Thank you guys so much for watching and commenting. We come out with new videos every Thursday, so if you're new, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell, all the YouTube things. If you're watching this on the day it comes out, we hope you have a wonderful and safe New Year's Eve and a marvelous 2021. Yes. May 2021 be much better than 2020. Please. <laughs> Which is a low bar. <laughs> Pretty sure it will be. Do you want to sing no, Old Lang Syne? Old Lang Syne. Is it Lay All Acquaintance? Let All Acquaintance? Let All Acquaintance be? I have no idea. Let All Acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Let All Acquaintance be forgot. And all lang sign. Nah. Come on. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna like fake sing.
I love when he reels things. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. We think we're saying that right. <laughs> oh. All right, here comes our tagline. Hasta luego. We'll see you next time. <laughs>